I am audible. You are audible, ma'am. Perfectly audible. I am audible. Yes, yes, I'm yes. Smoini. Please start the session. A warm welcome and a very good evening to all dear participants. Resource person of today's session, Dr. Hitesh Khurana sir, and a chairperson of today's session, Dr. Neeraj Kumar Agarwal sir, and all the organizers of this program. Today, we are having our lecture on how to write inclusion and exclusion criteria. Now, I would like to introduce today's resource person, guest speaker of session, Dr. Hitesh Khurana sir. He is currently serving as a professor in the Department of Psychiatric at Pandit B.D. Sharma TGIMS UHS Rotak since August 1999. He teaches psychiatric to the undergraduate and postgraduate medical students and MPhil students for degree in field of clinical psychology and psychiatric social work. Sir is a former secretary of level second administrative faculty meeting for the department at TGI MER Chandigarh. Sir has directly supervised the thesis work for three postgraduate students of psychiatric and also looks after psychiatric emergency services and electroconvulsive therapy clinic in the capacity of professor in charge. Sir has served at PGI MER Chandigarh from October 1995 to 1998. He takes care of psychiatric patients along with the consultation like consultation services. Sir had a special training post in drug the addiction and treatment center. Sir, please, I would like to invite sir for his today's session. Please, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Mohini ma'am, for a nice uh, introduction. And um, these words are really very uh, elating. And uh, I am not very sure ki whether I really deserve all these words or not. Uh, but coming to the topic at present, which is the task for today, and that is the writing the inclusion and exclusion criteria in, in research. I will try. And so coming down to the uh, research, what this the presentation is meant for. I have often seen that when we are writing a proposal for a thesis, especially because that is a very religious process and that is done very religiously. The protocol is always written before the thesis is submitted. And in protocol, there are frequent amendments and there are frequent revisions about the two as well as kinds of criteria which we have which are two dates, right and of course at that time the responsibility is also on the thesis process. but primarily it is the student who suffers and because of the protocol for violations of the protocol amendments are uh, uh, there and it takes too much of time and uh, i think uh, with this particular lecture you should be uh, in a position that you can avoid these kinds of amendments, especially in the inclusion and exclusion criteria. And then when we come to the research paper, it is again very difficult task when we are collecting data. We are often not knowing whether a patient or a person is full the criteria should be taken or not. And if we know what are the inclusion and exclusion criteria and what is the science behind these, then it should be very easy to take this year at that time and it makes the enrollment process very smooth for each researcher and this is what i aim and uh, as i am given to understand that there are a lot of activity numbers are also there so uh, my these uh, objectives are also for faculty members and along with that i will also be learning a lot from the questions and the clarification which uh, the faculty members as well as the students will ask me so I start with the basic thing, that is the concept of sample and population. And um, 
in this particular project in Kuiko family, we will read the, these concepts from your previous uh, lectures. Population would define quite differently, uh, unlike it is defined in the census. Okay, we define it in the terms of observation, not in the terms of individuals. And key, if there, uh, uh, what are the possible observations in a particular uh, set of individuals or the set of objects? We call that as population. And if our objects are families, and then these are the number of the families which will make uh, the base for the population. And if these are the individuals which will make the individuals as the base of the population. So the population within the given geographical area would differ depending upon the in the statistical terms and also in the terms of the research question, which we always formulate. And nevertheless, we don't perform any kind of statistical study or any experimental study on any particular population we, are, we do not have so much of resources available with us and so we always select a small uh, sample from that and on that we carry out the our experiment and then we like, think about okay, whether these results can be generalized to the population or there is some kind of difficulty and that is the advantage of sample. Like you just carry out the experiment on a small sample uh, site number of individuals or objects. We can think of generalizing or applying the results and helping the community benefit from the results of all this. But for that, the sample has to be very precise. It has to be uh, representative of the population. Otherwise, we will definitely have difficulty. And how we select this sample? And this sample is selected on the basis of the inclusion and the exclusion criteria which we lay down for the study. For each and every study, these criteria are unique depending upon its need and its aims and objectives. This is basically a set of very simple rules. And these simple rules are very methodically and the very scientifically selected. On the basis of it, we can assume that whatever experimental results are we are getting on one particular individual object, the same we can get on the other Chat, also. Please, please, uh, yes, I'm audible, yes, sir. Yes, you're audible. Uh, sir, there is uh, some lacking in voice uh, we're receiving the, uh, in the chat box from participants. I think there is some uh, lacking in voice. Uh, is there any network issue, sir? Network issues, I am not able to know that key in LCT if there is any network issue. I'm, I'm getting some background noise, like uh, some fluctuation over there. Uh, no. Uh, I think. Uh, it is not... And if there is any network issue, or just uh, like, please guide me how to correct it, and uh, I'll try to correct that. Now, now it's yeah, yeah, already yeah. back. Yeah, Amit, uh, can uh, can we can again? I think uh, if we uh, talks up can again uh, re uh, join the uh, from the link, then uh, that can uh, problem can, I can be. Again. I can. Yes, yes, yes please, 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 please try uh, once, uh, please. I'm really sorry. Uh, this uh, no, no problem, problem, sir. No problem. This is this will be net to the next issue. Please.
हेलो एम आई ऑडिबल यस सर ऑडिबल अनफॉर्चुनेटली दिस टेक्निकल प्रॉब्लम्स डू कम इन एंड एट दैट टाइम वी डी फील हेल्पलेस सो आई वाज टॉकिंग अबाउट द इंक्लूजन एंड एक्सक्लूजन क्राइटेरिया आई वुड लेट स्टार्ट देयर ओनली दीस आर द सेट ऑफ सर्टेन रूल्स व्हिच आर वेरी साइंटिफिकली एंड वेरी मेटिकुलसली प्लैंड and uh, these should not be violated at all during the research process and what the inclusion criteria is first of all whether we are taking the school this test or the inclusion criteria first and that is we select the individual according to the requirements of our research question and our uh, the objective which we have framed from that these are the attributes which are essential for the subject to participate and depending upon the age this can vary supposing as i am a uh, mental health professional and if i am carrying out some kind of drug trial on the patients who are suffering from depression then i will make sure that the, all those patients who i take are having the depression or suffering from depression or having some kind of cognitive element which is clearly important in one or the other way in that Along with that, in case I am entering the second arm, for second arm, I can have some other inclusion criteria also. That is, they should not have any kind of depressive or any other kind of psychiatric symptoms, so that they can serve as the health controls. And along with that, depending upon which population is the target population, I can have the inclusion criteria. Uh, other kinds of us like the, i can have a social demographic characteristics and i can if i aim to select uh, i aim to uh, apply the results of my study on the patients who are uh, elderly then i take the elderly patients and i ignore those who are pregnant and adult and in case my uh, i am working at some place that say ki this is some kind of reason where only the male uh, persons are there then i will be taking only the male as the gender for the purpose of my criteria and the criteria i would tend to ignore and similarly age also would be taken into consideration the like based on so in this way i will be able to select the individuals or sub representative of my target population that is people who are suffering from depressive episodes in the community and exclusion criteria are always tried or applied after we have selected the uh, subject according to the inclusion criteria means it may happen that we are selecting the uh, 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 the individuals which are having some other traits also which might confound the results supposing a person who is suffering from depressive episode may also be having the uh, el- may also be consuming alcohol at that and in that way the alcohol and if i give any kind of antidepressants the outcome of the antidepressant medication on the person who is just depressed or the person who is depressed and also taking alcohol would be different and in that day my result would really be confounded i won't be able to consider the modification or the, the lesser amount of uh, Im- improvement which i am getting is primarily because of some kind of uh, other variable present in the uh, person or this is the, just the natural outcome of the in this particular drug uh, in itself so in that way i will be confused and in order to remove the that kind of confusion i would prefer not to take those patients who are consuming alcohol uh, when they are being, especially when they are depressive episode and variables that decrease the generalizability of the results and those also i would like to take care of supposing the person is already taking some kind of antidepressant medication i want to be able to know whether the effect is because of the antidepressant medication which i am going to give or the person who is already taking variables that can increase the risk of harm to research we are always taking care ethical care research process come 
complete research process. And we always see that we exclude those patients who are pregnant or those patients who are of a, in a lesser or the very extremes of age, like children and the elderly, because they are vulnerable to any kind of metabolic change which is taking place in the, those worlds. And as per our Hippocratic oath and the Jarak oath, we always say the first aim should be in when we are helping patients. First aim is not to do any kind of harm. And in case a pregnant lady suffers any kind of harm is to the uh, 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 fetus. So in that way, we cannot include those persons. And uh, this would always be included in the exclusion criteria. In this way, we'll try to uh, refine our popular target population. But we are made, doing that. Ki a person will be having an immutable trait. A person can be uh, suffering from depression. A person can also uh, have some kind of legal complications because of the symptoms. And a person may also be having some kind of financial difficulties. A person and so on. What we'll try to do is ki here, by exclusion criteria, we'll try to reduce all those kinds of sources or the variables which can influence the outcome. Either they heighten the influence, or heighten the outcome, that the outcome is very very fast, or outcome is going to be very slow, as in case of the antidepressant, if the person is taking alcohol or the person is also taking the uh, any person is also having any kind of stressors along with that. So in that way, the exclusion criteria helps us to make a better focus upon the proper target population in which the study is. And ultimately, what we are going to get is the pure kind of sample on which we which a good amount of uniformity. And ultimately, the results which are going to are uniform and those may be the representative of the outcome of the disease uh, in any kind of population. So that's how the AX inclusion and the exclusion criteria are important for us. And why do we write these inclusion and exclusion criteria? I think uh, now, by now you know it very well, and it is to the reliability of the study. Our results, our study, everybody will read with interest, but ultimately they will also be having some kind of suspicion, and it is the human nature to be suspicious. If, if there had been a wonderful uh, inventions like telephone and the gramophone, those were also not taken without any suspicion, these were also tested. In the same way, our study would also be tested. And if anybody wants to test the study and they find that these particular results which the authors have received, obtained, these are not achievable in our study. They always suspect the inclusion and exclusion criteria along with the tools and the method and everything in the particular study. So we would like to avoid security instead of getting the discredit and we always work for the credit and we always work for the help to the men instead of doing the harm. And Generally, the results to large population. This is also possible in case we are having some kind of uniformity in our sample. If the sample is uniform, it is representative of the population, then we can proceed for uh, with the generalization or going to the uh, studies in the other areas also. That's how the generalization means to the a, a research. A research which is done here, the same kind of research can be done in the other populations also. And we are in the beginning, whenever we are submitting a research proposal, we are always interested in getting funding and the most funding requirement, requirement. One of the essential requirements is the inclusion and the exclusion criteria very methodically. In case they find problem with that, they are really very nasty persons because the funds are not something which is very easy to give or something which is very easy to acquire. So they just screen out and reject the proposals. 
and in case we have crossed that particular stage and now we publish our, publish our case, uh, hey, editors will be listed. Is this very useful for the community? That is the first criteria. And to have this specified the inclusion, the exclusion criteria along with the ethical criteria, that is the second and the third criteria which they'll be seeing. And in case it is okay, then they'll be sending for the, for the review process. And in this way, inclusion and exclusion criteria uh, play a very important role in the life of a researcher. And first, for it, whether it is from the allopathy, whether it is from the IRL, or any kind of engineering sciences, it is everywhere. Uh, it is having its importance, which we cannot challenge at all. And how to write inclusion criteria? Inclusion, this is uh, really an art. Of course, uh, uh, with the sort of uh, the person is also able to replicate it. And the person uh, in that way, if these two criteria are fulfilled, it means that we have written the inclusion criteria with a reasonable skill and it is a reasonable. Uh, and it should have the variables which we want to study. If I have a passive population, population must be there in the criteria. And characteristics of the population, whether I want to do it on the uh, uh, male, female gender, or I want to do it on the all uh, people in the community, uh, that should also be very clearly specified as I do criteria to state that. And in case I want to take those kind of patients who have already taken some kind of drugs, uh, like uh, anti they have taken or antipsychotics they have taken, it should also be managed so that I, I can convince that the drug is really superior and this can act against the resistant depression also. And it should facilitate the data collection also. What does this mean? It will are having a lot of issues when we are working in the community. Most of the community people are still illiterate. And if we are giving some kind of tool to them, which is written in English, they would be unable to comprehend that and they, we won't be able to collect a good quality of data from them. And whether they are just returning it blank or they are making some kind of marking in that and returning, which makes no meaning to them. Under those kind of circumstances, one inclusion criteria we can also write that we will be giving it only to those persons who are English native, who can read or und and understand English language. And most important, that whenever we are writing the inclusion criteria, just like aims and objectives, these should also be uh, our inclusion, that criteria should also be aligned to the research question. And that means indirectly they should also be aligned to the aims and the objective. So objective the alignment is very essential. In case we miss that, we won't be able to go further with the uh, uh, data uh, from our dish. And again, something which is very important that our team should have a consensus that okay, this particular inclusion criteria is logical. And this particular inclusion criteria is essential. This is helping us, and so it has to be included. And every person who is working in the team as a member should be able to provide the justification for the inclusion and exclusion criteria uh, given to them. Because once it is given, the people will be having the different ways of working, and they will be having the different ways of interpreting, which a researcher cannot afford. And ultimately, the all the four findings have to be uniform. And so the consent, developing a consent that is very essential in the um, uh, in this particular uh, uh, protocol when we are in the inclusion criteria. And again, coming to the uh, same uh, example over here. The, in case we have the cognitive functions we want to assess and we want to test the person's immediate memory, that inclusion criteria, all these uh, acceptable to, we have discussed this earlier, and we want to gender, any gender we want to take, and you say that in the community, the male and female are there, we'll be taking male and female both, 
will be taking adult and will be taking the disorder as depression are these acceptable to you which of these is acceptable and which of these is not acceptable and kind of uh, you can unmute your yourself and you can tell me Okay, now we go with this. I'm just uh, okay. I'm seeing there are a few messages that which say that um, uh, this quality is very poor. Let me see if I can adjust it. Or uh, otherwise, uh, I'll just go to the. I have given my slides. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I don't know okay, how I'll we'll be correcting it. Sir, are you using any earphone or headphone? I am using earphone. Earphone. Are you okay. Can you remove it? Uh, moving me up to help. Now I have removed this. Is it making any kind of uh, improvement in the sound quality? No, no, sir. No, sir. No, sir. The same uh, sound is there. Uh, there is a, some, time of, uh, some type of echo uh, is there in sound. So that's why the we receiving um, uh, the chat box queries. Uh, I'm not very sure that we. No, I am. Uh, okay, I have joined from a single device only for huh? using my laptop, and I don't have any other device. Uh, for that. Okay, I. And then, so many uh, times. A simple use earphone and uh, try to uh, make uh, some distance uh, from the mic. At least okay. uh, okay. six, an inch. That I can do. Yes, yes. Please. Far away from me. Uh, now, if you see this particular criteria, what my criteria should be uh, objective and it should be married. If we talk about the gender, whether it is male, female, any gender is there, this is quite objective and we don't have any confusion about this. In case we want to select a male or female, we can select just by uh, 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 very easily, just by uh, 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 inspection. And age, like say, ki, let's say ki if I say adult or if I say uh, elderly, ki, uh, do you have any problem about this? Any problem if I say that I am going to do the study on uh, and uh, uh, males, uh, adult uh, males, I am uh, uh, adults, I am doing the study. Uh, my subjects would be adults. What are your opinion about that? Again, here, I give you a hint that uh, whom we call adult. Or who the people call adult. People will be having kinds of definitions for adult. Someone will be saying that okay, the person who is the age 18 year or above, that person is adult. And some will say that the person who is 20 years old, that can be considered adult. And similar different people will have different opinion. So in that way, this criteria is very vaguely defined that he will be taking adult. It should be properly specified that he is uh, age will be from 18 years to let's say the 50 years. It would be 60 years. The upper and the lower cut both are required to be defined in the both situations whether I'm taking uh, uh, any kind of age category. And similarly, depression, 
डिप्रेशन ऑल्सो दर्म इज लोकली डिफरेंट इज इट द डिप्रेशन विच इज रिपोर्ट by the uh, person subjectively or is it the depression which we are rating using the diagnostic criteria or we are using some kind of scale to assess the uh, severity of the symptoms again here the age as well as the disorder criteria this i think these are really loosely defined and so we cannot really trust these kinds of inclusion criteria if we are writing like this this criteria this our protocol may come back with the uh, observations yes ki we need to modify it and we can avoid that by making it exactly uh, as uh, uh, per the criteria so that whether we are measuring or someone else is measuring it means the same and how do we write the exclusion criteria exclusions criteria these help us in refining or making our population sample population well focused and it just like that if we are purchasing some kind of budget in the market and let's say this is a some kind of sap or it is some kind of purchase in which there are a lot of other adulterations also there can be adulteration maybe because of substances or some other kinds of uh, the rotten kind of stuff in that and what we are doing here we are removing those rotten stuff vegetables and ultimately what we are getting is the pure pulse or the pure vegetable that is the purpose of exclusion criteria and it also serves another purpose that ki it also ensures the safety of research uh, or subject that ki if the person is included in a drug trial and the person is pregnant or the person is a child that seriously puts a lot of uh, uh, problems for the research team to ensure the safety of the being of that particular person and if the person is not improving because of these two kinds of uh, attributes then it may also bias the results and it will ultimately limit the generalizability and because of that we will be having difficulty in uh, interpreting the uh, re result uh, needless to say as for the inclusion criteria exclusion criteria also need to be objective and uh, measurable and this need to be aligned to the objectives these should not be uh, we have to take exclusion criteria also as the variables or those variables which we are totally excluding just like exposing uh, we can not say that if we are taking male person and we cannot find out where that thing to be excluded and these two are the different levels of the same variable which we call as gender or the sex so this we cannot have uh, we cannot say that uh, if, uh, if the per we are taking a press person then many patients will be excluding this is understood or the jo hai ki uh we need to uh, make it more refined that any other kind of psychiatric uh, problem would be uh, uh, excluded the mania ex excluding mania it is uh, understood because mania and depression these won't coexist in the same person it will be a different kind of category of the disease and if these are contradicting or complementing and inclusion criteria that is also not a good kind of exclusion criteria like if we say that we will be taking a depressed person and we say that he will be taking its uh, or the, those who will be having a severity less than 14 would be excluded but this need to be specified in the inclusion criteria that those persons are uh, suffering from the depressive episode as per the diagnostic criteria and having a uh, severity 14 or above on the hamilton rating scales only those should be taken as that and inclusion and exclusion criteria many people feel that ki these are mutually exclusive these are not ki uh, these uh, are then ki mutually supportive to each other in, in uh, to get a proper sample which we need uh, to now just coming over here again that ki are these exclusion criteria are uh, Uh, accessible to us that ki if our this is the same example which we are taking from in the previous slides ki exclusion criteria taking alcohol and antidepressant medications are listed as exclusion criteria ki do we accept these 
if we say that we taking alcohol this is having a lot of subjectivity what do we mean by taking alcohol ki if i am taking cup syrup that is also having alcohol content in it so it is there and if i am taking uh, alcohol during the uh, get togethers or parties that is also taking alcohol and if i can't live without alcohol and i need uh, alcohol amount daily uh, as a compulsion or as a because of my craving then also uh, this is uh, taking alcohol so here i have not defined about this alcohol intake means to us and whether it is a current alcohol intake or this is alcohol intake in the past also need to be very specified and all those kinds of specifications if these are there that will make it a very sound exclusive criteria otherwise it serves a purpose only to confuse the researchers and the readers of the protocol antidepressant medication again this can be taken on the same lines and it will be also having the same kind of problems as with the alcohol uh, intake both these are quite similar and uh, we need to take care of that we have to be very precise in the wording uh, of uh, uh, our inclusion and exclusion criteria you must be knowing that the objectives are smart and similar to exclusion and exclusion criteria can also be smart although here the terms are small having some different meaning a simple measurable affordable relevant and testable simple means that ki it should be very easy for us to manage that ki we should not require any kind of uh, sophisticated gadgets in order to assess if these are not available to us these will put a more burden on the research team on the funding agencies these should be measurable or these should be objectively assessable that ki whatever assessment i am making on the given criteria the same person uh, other persons are also making the same assessment about the inclusion and exclusion criteria so in that way uh, uh, there has to be an objectivity in the inclusion and exclusion criteria also affordable Uh, instead of achievable here the i have written the term affordable affordable in the terms ki these should not be too broad or they should not be too narrow that these are creating some kind of mess in our sample that if these are too broad we will be taking almost everything in our uh, sample or if the exclusion criteria as too broad will be uh, rejecting and almost taking nothing in our sample relevant these should be designed as per the needs of our research question okay this should help in answering the research question and should not be that okay, these are creating any kind of obstruction or these are totally a uh, neutral or indifferent to the research question testable again this involves that okay, if i am uh, using a particular inclusion and exclusion criteria the other person is also using the same kind of inclusion and exclusion criteria we both of us are getting the same kind of sample in the uh, given population which uh, uh, is available to us and so in this way besides the aims and the obje- besides the objectives the inclusion and the exclusion criteria also needs to be smart in their own way and when to we write inclusion and exclusion criteria this place is right at the time of the protocol stage research is a very planned activity and we cannot uh, uh, just like if we have to construct a uh, building and we always be making a plan or the plan of that and in that plan we will be including everything what kind of uh, room size is required to us and or uh, what can be the uh, uh, other kinds of where the need, windows and everything and similarly here also at the protocol stage we have to include everything so that we, at the end we are getting a nice building in the form of our good uh, research paper and once these are formulated it is good if it is possible not mandatory but if this is possible should always be we can always have a peer review from the uh, other faculty members that okay, is it a feasible is it a good inclusion and exclusion criteria because once we have formulated 
it is not possible for us to redo uh, our research journey. Research is not any kind of voyage which we can carry out with the Google Maps. And in case we are going in the wrong direction, it will reroute us. It is not possible. And if we have to reroute our research, which we often call as well, this is having a serious implications. It may put many research participants uh, at risk, and it may, may make the data from the memory invalid and it will put additional workload on the researcher and again if we are changing any protocol making any kind of comment we have almost to make a request to the review board or the regulatory authorities please help you know, and, and it also annoys definitely this has the they are not working and ultimately if we are making too many requests, uh, integrity as a researcher would always be questioned, and the funders would be really very much apprehensive when we are approaching them for the because they will they'll be also seeing us list of the research activities which have taken earlier, and they will be uh, having a uh, the um, the complete details of that with, with them, and if any research is funded by them and now again this, in this research the same problem was there and in this research also the same problem is quite likely better take some other uh, protocol and just not caring for it and if these are not properly chosen as will be taking too many people and uh, in the same way in case our uh, exclusion criteria is narrow this will give us sample this combination will give us a sample which is quite heterogeneous and in which not only the research question uh, the research question are there but along with many adulterants many confounding variables those are also there so instead of having we carry out any kind of uh, uh, effective study effectiveness study our study will get limited to the efficacy only and in a similar way, in case we have a very narrow kind of inclusion criteria and a very wide kind of exclusion criteria, again, we'll not be getting the sample of the interest. And so we have to make a sort of very judicious standoff key where this trade-off of the inclusion and the exclusion criteria, where the sensitivity and the specificity of our inclusion exclusion criteria matches that it gives us the appropriate required sample size with all those characteristics which we need for our research uh, subjects and once this is there we can have a reasonable confidence that we need to have uh, that we can carry out the research very uh, effectively how to select just an appropriate criteria let's have few examples so that if we want to carry out a research on the healthy population and if a person is having a heart rate of 50 per minute should we exclude that person this is a really very big question uh, because if we are in india where the sports as i am in haryana where the sports activities are quite popular and here, many people, students will be having the sinus bradycardia, that they will be having the heart rate 60 or less than that, and they are having the perfect health. And that type of health will be like not to exclude that. But on the other hand, if I have a patient who is free from any kind of heart disease and have a heart rate of 50, and then I will definitely exclude that person, keeping the other things also in the way. So, if we are laying down any particular criteria, we have also to see keep what in what kind of circumstances this criteria we are able to see enter its implications. And ultimately, these are the clinical implications which we can take into consideration. And accordingly, we need to or if we need to revise our criteria, we can revise. And similarly, if we are taking a person who is 50 years old and looking very unhealthy, but a person who is 70 years old and taking a morning walk and evening walk very regularly and meeting person and enjoying health, I think again we'll be making a mistake in making such kind of. So it is always 
many things uh, of the researchers also that where this particular judgment will play a role in the inclusion, whom to include and whom to exclude. Subject we have of medical, that is subjects who have uh, active medical or the psychiatric condition in which the opinion of the research or the investigative teams will compromise the ability to participate in the study. So ultimately, it is the researcher's responsibility. Okay, most of the time, this kind of statement is written over here that he, if the physical status or it doesn't allow a leave aside if a person is fulfilling the, the inclusion and the exclusion criteria, that person will be taken. But if both kinds of situation there, where it, the person's inclusion and exclusion criteria are slightly on the compromise side, the person is able to contribute. We might like to go for that. Why we are having a very little data on the pregnancy? That even if the Ayurvedic research is there or the medical research is there, in the both situations, we always avoid those who are pregnant. And consequently, what has happened that if we uh, uh, look at the literature, we are having very little or almost no drug pregnant patients uh, in that. And ultimately, we do not know that a particular drug can be given to the pregnant or not. And so we always need to make a kind of trade off. Okay? Where this trade off okay, that is quite subjective, is there. That he, if a person has already having some kind of accidental uh, exposure to a particular drug during pregnancy, okay, let's observe that particular person and we include that person in the uh, study. We can always do like this, but we won't be making any kind of active intervention, but simply observing that person as the time goes on. So that trade-off is always uh, uh, required. And how we apply this, as uh, highlighted earlier, the, uh, first we need to apply the inclusion criteria in, that, in this particular order only, exclusion criteria later, and it should always be before randomization. Supposing we are having the two groups or the two or more arms of our study, and we have to randomize the subjects, the exclusion criteria should be uh, applied first, and then the randomization should be uh, done so that ki every person is having the equal chance of getting allotted to uh, the uh, particular group, and in that, they are, uh, they are representing the same kind of population. And how do we select it? It is not easy. Okay, first of all, we have to think okay, what can be, that is the best way. And then we have to discuss it among our team members and they can give their inputs. And we have also to look at the literature and valid sources of the medical conditions that okay, what are the signs, symptoms of that, okay, what kind of medications the person can tolerate and which they cannot tolerate. And we have also to look at the previous process which had a particular kind of uh, inclusion and exclusion criteria. And accordingly, we have to make our own. And but the most important thing is whatever criteria we choose because the study is our own. So the reasoning would also be asked from us only. What do you have to Never copy and paste. Criteria is available. You can always think about this criteria. And if you feel like using that particular criteria, again, you have to have your own reason. But at the same time, always make a citation for this particular criteria, okay, this particular criteria we have taken from this particular study. How to adhere to this particular criteria? Different team members are there. We can always, from time to time, we can always ask you what is our inclusion in the exclusion criteria. And if they are able to answer well, it is okay. Otherwise, they should be trained to use it and require stuff. And we can also give the documents to the staff who is in the field that the, the particular criteria is there. It should be handy with them. They can take and cross the criteria is fulfilled or the criteria is uh, not fulfilled. And 
direct questions to the private investigators also that if they, there are any kind of doubt in the mind of any staff member they can always make a question to the uh, investigator and investigator can inform on and the progress meeting whatever the work is being done by the staff in the community and we can always get a web going smoothly as per the in, uh, criteria or we need some kind of uh, uh, other inputs or the uh, refresher training to them. In the different studies, you'll be seeing that the criteria are different and it can be from the place to place. These vary because of the cultural reasons and because of the political reasons also. And we can perform okay, in the West, the people can perform research on monkeys and cows. But in India, we cannot really perform that because of our religious sentiments uh, unless the research is directly benefiting the cow. The cow cannot be our experimental animal, not the monkey can be our experimental animal in that way. Phases of the study, when we do not know about a particular drug, and uh, we are a little skeptical in giving it to, to those who are at risk. At that time, we'll be having our criteria towards the stricter or the stringent side. But when we know it is in the phase three or the phase four trials, and we we'll, are giving it to each and every person at that time. And so depending upon the phase and depending upon the cultural background, our studies can be different. And what uh, is it really good that we should have inclusion and exclusion criteria? It always gives us an idea that key, how will it affect our workload. Supposing we have calculated the sample size, that key, this is the particular sample size of a particular study is 10. And prevalence of the different kinds of criteria, whether inclusion criteria or exclusion criteria, is uh, prevalence is like that. And so what we'll do is that we will keep on dividing the required number with the uh, number of uh, with the prevalence figures for that. Okay, with the starting with the lowest and going to the highest and ultimately we'll see that if there is a we need 10 persons 10 multiplied by 0.25 it makes 40 and 40 multiplied by 0.5 it makes 80 and ultimately with these five criteria for selecting 10 persons will be needing the criteria will be needing 20 subjects minimum and in this way we can uh, estimate our workload also in case we have a good inclusion and the exclusion criteria available with us this is called the attrition chart and attrition charts are very useful and many uh, skilled researchers they do use it <clears throat> how to word the inclusion exclusion criteria a good statement a well very uh, uh, precise statement is required is a diagnostic criteria we can use the diagnostic criteria if we have uh, other criteria like uh, education criteria we can say that you will be taking on those who have educated the 8th or 10th like that otherwise we won't be taking those and so as pre be as precise as possible in view of the ground realities of the community that key, it should not be that key, we should not make the criteria so strict that it is very difficult for us to get the required number of subjects in the study. There are a few examples that he's posing here, and uh, I would uh, wish that if you can point out some kind of errors in this, that uh, example is that key, uh, uh, patient satisfaction in with the hospital services uh, is being investigated, and for this, the inclusion criteria is. Uh, attending for first time any gender and have visited all the facilities in the hospital and uh, visiting hospital for second or more time this is exclusive and uh, what is your say about it any observations observations can be put in the chat box also and uh, uh, you can speak this also uh, by unmuting we are almost at the end i request to participants if there is any uh, confusion then uh, raise your hand so i can send you the unmute request Yes, how can every, every facility 
Yes, this Kriya is somebody has a master a question in the chat. Uh, how every person this is a really very strict criteria. And every facility to a lay person means that the person has visited the party area also and the person is in the canteen also, dispensing area also, OT also, and emergency also. How is it possible just in the first visit? So this criteria is really, really very strict and we should not have this kind of criteria at all. And if we have this criteria, then we are naturally going to uh, collect no patient at, at all in the first visit. This criteria can be modified. That we can always say that the person must have visited the medicine opening or the person must have visited the KHPITS OPD like that. Saying that the KHPITS are shallifits and operation data centigrade in what is not possible. Yes, I agree with the, your uh, uh, question, uh, uh, Dr. Shrayu. Minimum two facilities, yes. Sir, why is not here? Uh, minimum two facilities, am I audible now? Is it okay now? Minimum two facilities, yes. this can be taken. And similarly, uh, exclusion criteria, which is the visiting hospital for the second or more day. This is uh, already complementing the inclusion criteria, the same variable, the number of visits. If we talk of the uh, uh, criteria very in the terms of variables, the variables in the ex inclusion and exclusion criteria, these have to be different. And here we are taking the two different levels of the same variable, and this should be avoided. And uh, its exclusion criteria can be simply uh, uh, removed from uh, this particular list. Any gender, yes, any gender can be taken. This is uh, what I feel, but if there is any kind of different opinion, uh, we can discuss that. Uh, I am not able to move my slide now. It is. Uh... Sir, use uh, keyboard or mouse click button. Okay. No, I think of not. It is just putting some kind of mark over here. I now it has Select moved. It a pen, pen. Uh, now I think it has moved, but uh, I am not able to see my slide now. Is it an example to CBT in depression? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Visible, visible, sir. If this the person, uh, the if, uh, researcher wants to make a study of the patients who are receiving cognitive behavior therapy in depression and the criteria is suffering from depression, receiving a CBT, excluding criteria, presence of anxiety symptoms, and any previous experience with CBT, and taking medication during the current episode. What do you have to say about it? Let's again, put it in the, your uh, statements in the chat box, and uh, I'll be uh, I'll be able to uh, comment about that. First, inclusion criteria is it okay suffering from depression? This criteria, if you were this again, a very vague criteria, it should have been like something that is suffering from ICD 10 or DSM 4 or 5 diagnosed depressive episode for the past so many months or years. Some specification should have been there. 
this specification will make everybody to diagnose depression as per the criteria and will be selecting the same kind of person here the risk is that the those patients who are suffering from depressive episodes those would also be taken and if the person is saying yes i am feeling depressed think about depression go guys so just go so in this way we will be having too much of this criteria is too much of exclude inclusive and receiving cbt Yes, receive. Somebody has already commented upon that. Yes, CBT receiving is included, whereas this is our intervention. That he has have written the person's willingness to receive CBT. If the person is already receiving CBT, then do not know how many things he has done, but we have to get it right from the start. In this way, we can uh, have. Uh, uh we can uh, refine this particular inclusion criteria also he will also have cbt experience which is in exclusion yes that if here again this by way once if the person has taken cbt let's say the part 10 years ago or the person had just one or two sessions of cbt and after that the person dropped the person is having experience but how this particular kind of experience is uh, going to uh, interfere with our results at present so again this criteria to uh, is uh, modify we can say that if a person has received cbt minimum 5 or 7 sessions in the past 5 years or 10 years then it will make a real sense that okay now this person can be excluded otherwise will be excluding with one also and if a person has approached cbt then also it is quite likely taking medications during current episode this is also equally vague medications means what if i have taken analgesic today because i was having headache so i will be excluded from the cbt again we have to specify that what kind of medicines and for how long this medicine should be taken so that we can exclude it otherwise we can not similarly this example obesity and food intake among children inclusion children with bmi 30 and exclusion other medical conditions interfering with food intake and parents not able to keep record of the food intake but is you are think about it the person is having bmi 30 and above what do you feel about that should this person the person be taken here in this particular area something is correct and something is incorrect in the inclusion criteria here in the inclusion criteria something is correct and something is incorrect yes age group should be specified very right age groups if we have not specified that if the child child means what it will be very somebody will be taking 3 years after and somebody will be taking 10 years after so yahan pe the children between age from 5 year to 10 year it will be specified that ki we have ki if the bmi is 30 or more this qualifies for obesity so this is correct and exclusion criteria other medical conditions interfering with food intake is this a correct kind of uh, exclusion criteria yes somebody is telling who and um, uh, i would be glad if the reason can also be given for this you can speak chrayu dr chrayu you may speak by muting yourself
<clears throat> this criteria, if you say this is a very general, there are many conditions that if a person is having cancer, if a person is having diabetes, or the person is having renal or the heart disease, and almost any kind of condition you talk of, whether you talk of the simple febrile conditions also, they will also cause loss of appetite and inter interference with the food intake. So here the onus lies on the researcher, ki how skillful and how well he is uh, able to rule out those conditions. And uh, this criteria can be taken provided the investigator had trained in identifying all these conditions or screening, uh, if not uh, identifying, if the those are, can be screened very easily. Just that the person is having increased food along with that, the person is also having increased and I think that the diabetes can be ruled out like that. If these are there, then this can be accepted as exclusion criteria. And you will be seeing that this kind of exclusion criteria are very popular in this protocol. And but ultimately, this is the investigators who has to answer. Patients not able to keep a record, this is suggesting that he, here if we are including those persons also where the record keeping is not proper perhaps we will be taking those kinds of patients also in which the data quality is compromised so let's not take that uh, kind of patients with us and so we come to the end of this uh, presentation and including uh, the essential parts about that, it need to be aligned with the aims and objects. Everything is guided by the research question, and everything is that. They should be as precise, measurable, affordable, relevant, and testable, so that we do not have any kind of uh, uh, second opinion about that, and everybody is able to find the same kind of criteria uh, in the uh, given population or the person. These do help the researchers to make a proper selection. The inclusion and exclusion criteria are sample would be just a chunk of uh, uh, pebbles only, which will be having a mixture of almost everything. It's added throughout, and it saves us from the bias. And IRB institutional review boards won't be asking us and again and again because it will help us in generalizing our results. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. I have shared the slides with the organizers, and I would request the organizer to pass these on to all the participants for their future reference. And I have given my email ID also over here that in case anybody wants to contact, please feel free to contact. And now, in case you have any kind of questions, clarifications required, please you can unmute yourself also and you can put. Uh, those are questions in, in the in the chat box. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir, for your knowledgeable and, and interactive session. I hope that participants get benefited for today's session. Now, I request participants that please raise your hand and ask your query in chat box. Any kind of questions? In case you have inclusion and exclusion criteria with some of your own studies, those can also be discussed. Okay, there is no question, sir. I think if there is remaining any query, you can mail us. I left the mail yes. ID in the chat box. And sir also uh, somebody wants to ask a little deviation for the topic, please. Uh, yes, key, I would be happy to take your question if I can answer. Yes. Sir. Okay. Now I would like to introduce today's chairperson, Dr. Neeraj Kumar Agarwal, sir. 
सर इज करेंटली वर्किंग एज एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर इन द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ फार्मोकोलॉजी जी एन सी गवर्नमेंट मेडिकल कॉलेज रतलाम एंड ही इज अ चेयरपर्सन इन इंस्टीट्यूशनल एथिक कमेटी जी एन सी दतिया एम पी एंड ऑल्सो ए मेंबर सेक्रेटरी इन इंस्टीट्यूशनल एथिक कमेटी जी एन सी रतलाम सर इज अ फॉर्मल प्रिंसिपल इन्वेस्टिगेशन इन सी आर ओ फॉर सी टी फेज एफ वन एंड बी ए एंड बी ई स्टडीज सर इज हैविंग मोर देन थ्री ईयर्स एक्सपीरियंस इन द फील्ड ऑफ क्लिनिकल फार्मोकोलॉजी मेडिकल एथिक्स पेरिशनल फार्मोकोथेरोप्यूटिक्स एंड मेडिकल एजुकेशन एंड रिसर्च सर हैड कंडक्टेड मोर देन थ्री हंड्रेड क्लिनिकल ट्रायल्स एज इन्वेस्टिगेटर इन फार्मास्यूटिकल्स सर हैज पब्लिश मोर देन थर्टी ओरिजिनल रिसर्च पेपर्स इन वेरियस नेशनल एंड इंटरनेशनल जर्नल्स नाउ आई वुड लाइक टू रिक्वेस्ट डॉक्टर नीरज कुमार अग्रवाल सर टू काइंडली शेयर अस व्यूज एंड सम ऑफ टूडेज सेशन सर या नमस्कार टू ऑल ऑफ यू द सेशन द इंक्लूजन एंड एक्सक्लूजन क्राइटेरिया वाज वेरी गुड प्लान बाय डॉक्टर हितेश खुराना एंड ही हैज कवर्ड ऑल द डिटेल्स द डीप details of the inclusion and exclusion criteria by giving uh, uh, very relevant examples and uh, i hope that audience uh, uh, they enjoyed and uh, they will uh, definitely use this knowledge to in your future or uh, ongoing projects so uh, i would like just uh, uh, as far as the uh, ethics committee is concerned so as we generally review the protocol so uh, as you know that inclusion and exclusion criteria uh, that uh, that uh, is being uh, made up in uh, during protocol formation whenever you make a protocol then you use the inclusion and exclusion criteria so whenever it's very important that you must go in the detail to choose the inclusion and exclusion criteria at the time of the protocol i have seen some sometimes what happen the investigator just uh, uh, become very relaxed uh, during the protocol and then they uh, uh, they think that uh, we will uh, change the things when uh, whenever we start the trial but actually uh, it's not possible because of uh, if you take the ethics committee approval from that particular protocol if you change slight change in the inclusion and exclusion criteria you have to take re permission from the ethics committee okay so this is important that during the protocol uh, formation uh, you have to be uh, very much de deep studies to uh, take the help of review of literatures or on the basis of your objectives or sample size so very well sir uh, very well uh, Uh, give, give give the example of inclusion criteria there must be not variable should not be repeated in inclusion and exclusion and uh, definitely uh, this inclusion and exclusion criteria uh, this knowledge uh, will be very helpful in future and uh, uh, i would like to congratulate sir that they have very well uh, covered the topic and it's a it's very small topic but they have given the lot of examples and uh, thank you so much thank you very much sir thank you thank you so much sir now on behalf of the institute of applied statistics we convey our sincere thanks to all the participants for their active participation during the session we heartily thanks to this resource person dr hitesh khurana sir for a very interactive session and also thanks to dr neeraj kumar agarwal sir for chairing today's session thank you so much now this is the end of today's session thank you very much thank you